Google just dropped a big bomb, Gemini 2.5 Pro, and the hype is real. Gemini 2.5 Pro. Gemini 2.5 Pro. Oh, Gemini 2.5 Pro. Oh, Gemini 2.5 Pro. Oh, Gemini 2.5 Pro. It is the best model we've ever made. They're saying it's their most intelligent AI model yet. Top of all the benchmarks, state-of-the-art reasoning, and the whole shebang. Now, rather than focusing on those standard benchmark reports, I wanted to explore its potential for practical application. And what better way to test it than developing fully functional running games that you can play on Chrome? In this video, we'll be working through three stages of increasing complexity. We'll start by developing a simple tic-tac-toe game, then move towards a chess matchup, and finally attempt to develop a platform by game. All throughout the video, we'll be using JavaScript libraries for Chrome compatibility. The goal is to assess the AI's ability to generate functional code with very minimal manual intervention. Remember, I am not a native coder, so this is going to be an interesting task and video for both you and me. Let's get started. All right, let's get the magic started now. Uh, we'll be starting with accessing AI Studio. And a very crucial thing for us to check before we get started with our prompting is to ensure that we are on the latest Gemini 2.5 Pro model, right? Uh, this is where you get this uh, access from. So I've clicked on it. And for the sake of this video, I already have created certain prompts, right? For the tic-tac-toe, as you can see, it says that create an HTML, CSS, and a JavaScript code for a playable tic-tac-toe game that I or you can play on Chrome browser itself with following features. I'm giving the prompt or rather the model more information, right? Now, information like styling, that the style of the game board should be visually appealing. Let's see how much of visual appeal it gives it to us. And all the way, more importantly, on the fact that there should be certain rules, right? Implementing JavaScript based on a logic, I'll be playing against CPU. There would be different kinds of level of difficulty. Prompt a joke when the game is over. Maybe prompt a trivia when starting to play. Uh, so yeah, things like this, right? So let me copy paste this over here. This is a long prompt, right? Let's see if it works or not. I have copy pasted in my studio, AI studio right now. Again, the model is Gemini 2.5 Pro experimental and let's hit run. Now, the good thing about Gemini 2.5 Pro model, unlike all the other models out there is that it knows how to reason. It knows how to think, right? So as you can see, all this that you see right now is not the real output or the code of the game. It is rather the model thinking and reasoning itself basis the kind of inputs and the requirements I had given in the prompt, right? Now, once it is done thinking, it will start to give us codes, right? It is still thinking, let's see how long it takes. Wow, that was a long time, but we've got our three codes right now, right? It's HTML, right? Let's see. Let me download this right now and I'll get to the very next step very soon, right? I've downloaded it just now. The CSS, which is more on the styling part of it, right? Let's download that. Perfect. And then finally, this is going to be the main one, which is the JavaScript script.js. Wow, that's a long one. Now we have the codes. We are almost there. Two small steps that are left. Let's now minimize this. Let's go to my desktop and create a new folder and name it as tic-tac-toe. What I need to do is the download files, I need to get them over here. Now let's minimize this and open this folder. A very important step for us to do is to rename this, right? So we need to rename the HTML code as index.html, index.html. The second is renaming the CSS code as style.css, right? So here's the CSS code, style.css. And then finally, the script, the JavaScript code as script.js. And that's it, folks. And the model is opening. So it is asking me what kind of difficulty is I'm looking for from this uh, tic-tac-toe game, right? So let's say I am looking for a medium difficulty. All right, so it is giving me a trivia as well. Trivia, the name tic-tac-toe might derive from an old version of backgammon. Let me start the game. I put it over here. The CPU is going to put it over there, right? Folks, I am intelligent, I'm telling you, but I'm going to lose this game uh, just to see what it shows. And of course, the CPU is one. And remember, I had asked the model uh, in the prompt that you need to give me a joke once the game is over. And the joke is, what do you call fake spaghetti and impasta? Well, that's the power of Gemini right now. You know, with a simple code and a simple prompt with a person who has got no coding experience, I was able to get this thing. Let's move on to the next and more complex use case of designing a chess game. So the second use case is going to be a bit more complex. It's chess that we'll be, you know, kind of developing this time now. Again, as you know, for the sake of this video, I already have a prompt. We're already done with tic-tac-toe. Let's move to chess, right? The prompt is saying to create an HTML model, a CSS and a JavaScript code for a basic chess game with the following features. The more features you give, of course, the model will think a bit more. It'll take more time, but then you're making the game even more fail-proof, right? 
So for example, I've given it certain interesting things over here, right? I'm saying you're playing against the CPU. Uh, I'm giving it certain things about piece placement, piece selection, basic movement, right? More validation. It should be turn-based, right? Again, that's what I'm saying, right? I've also told the model that you'll be playing against the CPU as I've already told you. Something that, you know, I have kind of put over here because chess is going to be very much complex because there are many, many different moves over here, is that I'm taking the model to prioritize functional code over optimized or complex solutions. So it is about having a running model as opposed to making it very complex. You know the drill. We'll go about copy-pasting this. We'll get back to the fabulous AI studio, which is now powered by Gemini 2.5 Pro experimental model and hit enter. And fingers crossed, I'm also doing it for the very first time. See what the model talks about. Of course, this is going to take a lot of time. When I say a lot of time, you're not like 20, 30 minutes, maybe two to three minutes. So let the model generate. I'm going to speed up that process. You know the drill again. Once the model is generated, it will generate three different codes, HTML, CSS, and the JS. So I'm going to rename them once. You've already seen in the previous use case. And I'm going to see uh, to you with a running chess game, hopefully in the next cut. All right, folks, this is how the game looks like. It is telling us this is basic chess game. And let's try and move it from here. OK, I can select it and I can move it till here. Of course, it's following the international rules. And let's move this over here as well. So the pawns are working. Let's see if my knight is working, that it is working as well. Of course, I'm not going to finish the entire chess game right now. But as you see, it was a matter of three to four minutes. With a simple logic, I was again able to, you know, create this chess game from the very scratch. Let's move on to the very final case of designing a platform pie game that we can play with different levels. This is it, folks. It all boils down to the very last use case. Let's see if the latest Gemini 2.5 Pro model can handle the task of creating codes for running a platform game, a very, very basic Mario kind of a game for a person who knows no coding. And that's me just by prompting through it. You know the drill, we already have created a prompt for a platform game. Let's quickly see, of course, creating HTML, CSS and JavaScript code for a Pi game platformer, right? Which should be playable in a Chrome browser or a web browser. Quickly telling you certain things, I've asked the model to tell, you know, to have 10 levels, which each level should be ending with a win, of course. There should be lava, wow. <laughs> and if you fall, you die. And the game asks you to try again. Uh, there should be comp, you know, collision detection. So we're talking about even more complexity right now between the players and the platform. Make it possible for the character to jump on the top of the level. And you know what I've done? Take inspiration from Mario games, right? I've also asked to have like a game loop, update the game state, uh, that is player movement, collision detection, etc., and render the game objects on the canvas. You see, that's a lot of complexity that I've asked the model to do. I'm not myself sure if the model will be able to do that. Let us now just you know cross our fingers, copy paste this entire you know prompt and paste it over here. It's gonna take its sweet, sweet time. So I'm gonna now meet you once the code is generated. All right, folks, it took exactly 81 seconds for the code to be generated, all the three codes to be generated. I already have downloaded them and I've pasted them in one folder. That's very important and renamed them as well, right? So let's open this folder. It is called Pi Game. And I will be seeing this for the very first time itself. So it's going to be a very, very surprise thing for me as well. So these are my three codes. I need to go on index.html and then just double click on it and see what happens. Voila, we have it now. Uh, this is level one and this looks interesting. Let me see, of course, wow, there's, there's like good gravitation. And that's like my level two. I think that's the lava if I'm not wrong. Oh yes, that's lava. So it's asking me to enter or uh, hit R to retry. So I'm going to do R this time. I get started at level one. Okay, this is fine. All right, let's game over. It's going to take me some time to reach to level 10, but that was the use case works for you. Just by simple prompting, we were able to design such three amazing use cases. I'm going to see you in the end grades in just a bit. So there you have it, folks. They were not kidding. Gemini 2.5 Pro is amazing and is lowering the barrier to entry for game development and potentially many other creative fields. And we're getting closer to just the idea. Gone are the days when a deep knowledge of code was the sole gatekeeper. As long as you will have a disruptive idea and a willingness to explore these new technologies, you can achieve remarkable things. And this is just the start. The potential for AI-assisted creation is going to be vast. And I'm excited to see what innovative applications emerge as these tools become even more accessible. If you found this exploration valuable, please consider liking and subscribing. Share your own ideas for AI-driven projects in the comments below. Until next time, keep exploring and keep creating.